Our next guest, we go to the phone, State Representative Dustin Burroughs joining us here on the Chad Eastie Show. Representative Burroughs, good morning. How are you today? Good, Chad. Appreciate you having me on. We had a uh, great weekend. Uh, my wife and I were in Tarrant County uh, trying to keep the uh, Texas House in Republican control and always happy to get to call in and join you. Yeah, I appreciate you doing so. Uh, let, let's talk about that, uh, I, I guess, first. Uh, you know, about the Texas House, a uh, lot of editorial pieces and uh, analysis have been put into, you know, w- which way the Texas House will go. Will it stay red? Will it uh, stay blue? Will it end up in a tie? Uh, what, what's what's the feeling there on the ground when you're uh, out uh, helping and, and campaigning uh, for some of these Republicans? Yeah, it, it, it's very positive. I mean, the reactions that I've gotten are very positive in Tarrant County. Um, a lot of the fight centers around taxes, which, of course, you know, that's very important to me. Uh, the Democrats, uh, and especially the Democrat in the race I was working on, came out for uh, no uh, new revenue streams and closing tax loopholes, which is codes for raising taxes. Uh, let's not be confused. That's exactly what it is. And they've campaigned on undoing the uh, property tax reforms that we made last session and, you know, of course, uh, doing all sorts of other things as far as uh, even having retail marijuana and gambling, which I'm very much opposed to. So the fight's very real. I do predict the Texas House will stay red. But, you know, my wife and I wanted to go do our part to help ensure it because of the policies that would otherwise get to the floor. So, I mean, uh, you know, right now, obviously, Republicans uh, have control of the Texas House, how much would, you know, how much do you need to have the House by to feel confident that conservative pieces can get through uh, the upcoming legislative session? Well, obviously, the more the better. Um, You know, one of the conservative reforms that I'm fighting for next session is the uh, ending and the ban on taxpayer-funded lobbying. Um, I would love to have a significant block of conservative Republicans in there to help get that done. Yeah, Um, We're going to need all the votes we can get. Has, uh, you know, last week you had the uh, last presidential debate, and at the very end of it, uh, Joe Biden said that he would work to uh, end, basically end the oil industry. Uh, His campaign later tried to walk that back. Uh, Have those comments uh, had any impact, you think, on uh, the way voters are, are feeling? And what would that do to the Texas economy if Joe Biden gets his wish to basically do away with the oil and gas industry? Yeah, devastating. Devastating to the Texas economy, devastating to the Texas budget. Um, And people are noticing that. I think that we're hearing a lot of people who are connected either directly or indirectly to oil industry uh, that heard that and said this is completely uh, horrible economic policy and we've got to actually vote for it. Let me talk a little bit about some of the numbers. It's really interesting to just say, show how connected we are to oil and gas and how much good it actually does provide. So first off, we know 28,234 jobs are directly tied in Texas to the oil and gas economy. Uh, I've actually heard numbers of up to 500,000 are indirectly tied to it. So a lot of people would automatically be out of work if Joe Biden were in the White House. Uh, In 2019, just the Texas budget alone for one year, $2.65 billion of taxes were collected from the oil and gas industry that went just to public education. So if under Joe Biden's plan, our schools would lose $2.65 billion of money. Another number I thought was really interesting. For the biennium, $9.64 billion comes from severance uh, in motor fuel taxes that goes to pub ed in our transportation. $500 million comes from oil and gas industry to fund our state hospitals. And a billion dollars from oil and gas is there for our teacher retirement system. So you think about all of those things, the job loss, the budget holes that we have and all the things that we fund with it would automatically go away, you know, if Joe Biden closed it down. Visiting with State Representative Dustin Burroughs here on the Chad AC Show. Uh, do, do you think that'll uh, have some play in the final, what, now eight days uh, of the election? Yeah. Not only for, for House races uh, here in Texas, but, you know, even even in the, uh, the, the Senate race between John Cornyn and M.J. Hager. Yeah, word is getting out. I mean, I've talked to many people who actually, you know, this caught their attention. They were really surprised, you know, by you know this late big plan that he's rolled out, and they realized what bad effect it would have on their personal households. And I think that people are going to show up to vote for President Trump for many reasons, including this one, and John Cornyn, and hopefully all the way down the ballot to many of my friends who are in tight races across the state. Yeah. Uh, one more uh, statewide issue that I want to ask you about before we turn our attention to some local stuff. 
Uh, and that is, you know, the, uh, the, there's going to be obviously another speaker's race. Uh, when do you anticipate that heating up? Will that heat up after the election? I don't know the answer to that. You know, every speaker's race has its uh, different uh, ways of going around. And I think that members will continue to talk. And um, I don't think it'll be closed to figure it out before the election day, but I think uh, very soon thereafter. Yeah. Okay. Um, the uh, rollbacks, it looks like uh, Lubbock will, will have to roll back at some point uh, after staying at a, above 15 percent uh, hospitalization for COVID-19 in our trauma service area. H- have you heard from the governor about this? Uh, is that something that he would normally reach out to the area representatives about and, and you know, share what his plan is and what uh, he's going to do as far as uh, the, the executive order goes? Yeah, so I've talked to his office. His office has been very good at keeping us, you know, in the loop. Even if, uh, even if some of us are more on the open side than not, you know, he's had an order in place. Uh, it seems, uh, you know, that they're going to go with what the order says, and obviously, uh, the governor's making these calls. Yeah. Okay. Uh, no talk of a special session or anything, right? No, we're 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 at a point in time that we're going to be there. Uh, before we know it, I mean, there's talk of special sessions after the regular session upcoming, but I don't anticipate any special session being called between now and uh, when we actually gavel in in January. Okay. Uh, over the weekend, uh, Lubbock's mayor, uh, Dan Pope, he was on with Brian Mudd on uh, the, the Talking Points program, and, and he was asked about, uh, I guess, his relationship with area lawmakers. He said that, you know, he, he got, a, you know, I'm paraphrasing here, but basically he got along well with uh, Representative Frulo, uh, said that he's, he's had some conversations with uh, Senator Perry uh, and, and made it basically sound as though uh, you two don't have much of a, a relationship uh, or much of a working relationship. I think he said in this time period, uh, not not sure exactly what that means, uh, but how would you describe your relationship uh, with, with Lubbock's mayor? Look, Chad, my door is always open to the Lubbock mayor, regardless of who's in that office. And any disagreements that the current mayor and I have had have never been personal. I, I have no personal ill will or animosity at all towards you know, anybody. And I've got a great relationship with many elected officials in Lubbock. Um, the disagreements this mayor and I have had have always been on policy, and, and quite frankly, I think that it's good and healthy for there to be policy disagreements. That's kind of what this thing is built upon, and you know, we disagreed you know, on things such as I, I filed a bill to get injured first responders some help, and I know I disagreed with him when he closed gun stores and churches down, and I know he disagrees with me on wanting to ban taxpayer-funded lobbying, but I guess last session, you know, I, I was the House sponsor and champion for property tax reform that uh, made sure we didn't increase taxes by over three and a half percent for counties and cities. And I know that he and a cadre of other mayors uh, were very much opposed to that. Um, and I guess whenever we passed that was probably, um, you know, the last time this mayor and I have had a lot of conversations. He was actively working, uh, you know, in Austin, and we had a lot of conversations, very respectful, very good conversations and debate about that. And, you know, after that bill passed, we just haven't had much to say or talk about. But that all being said, uh, you know, it, it, it's just policy disagreements from time to time. But my door is wide open anytime. What uh, something else that he had said in that interview is basically saying it's it's y'all's job uh, when when it comes to the uh, the the uh, Planned Parenthood and the n- uh, no abortion uh, ordinance in Lubbock that uh, you know uh, basically the the legislature has taken power away from the cities on uh, all these other issues and and that uh, you know basically making it sound as though you are passing the buck to the city that if y'all want something done then the state legislature should be done. Uh, how would you respond to that? Well, I totally disagree with the legal analysis of some law firm from Houston that, you know, is very tied with, you know, a lot of mayor's offices uh, when they came up with this. In fact, I think they uh, forgot to point out that the pre-row laws on Texas are still on the books, so nothing that we would propose could actually conflict with the general laws of Texas. They uh, missed an entire citation in their legal analysis, and I'm hoping that some lawyers uh, will kind of put out a rebuttal to that. That all being said, you know, I've got a huge track record of being pro-life and passing pro-life legislation in the Texas House. I'm very proud of that record. Uh, numerous bills, I don't have them all in front of me, but I'd actually put them out, and we will continue in the Texas legislature to do all we can uh, 
and do everything possible to uh, end abortion in Texas. All right. Uh, Representative uh, Dustin Burroughs, as always, appreciate your time. Uh, stay warm, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you later. Thanks, Chad. Thank you. That's Representative Dustin Burroughs here on the Chad Acey Show, News Talk KFYO.